Yeah, that looks a lot better to me. Finally got her dialed in, test setup kicked butt. We got the PIDs all in the right places and now she flies like a dream. No hands all day, that's what I'm talking about. What's up guys? We are back. Intuitive Engineering here. Another video in the series. I am so stoked to share this with you. We got a lot of new updates and they are freaking awesome. Let me tell you, I'm really seeing a lot of progress. So the big changes we made are the integrated rear mast and now all the linkages are inside the post. So it's much more sleek, much more compact, much more refined. And then also in the software. I poked around a little, did a couple things. Hunt and pecker routine, they're good. And uh, now it'll go slow, it'll go fast, and we can modulate the speed a lot better. In addition to those two things, I also updated the styrofoam part. It's so now it'll float a lot more level. And we got a better measurement of power draw going down to the motor so we can check the efficiency and everything like that. So with all that stuff out of the way, let's get into the build and then we'll get her out on the water. Woo! Okay guys, so we're here in my Onshape CAD studio that you can look at in the description below have a link to it. As you can see on the right, the wing there is turning about its uh, pivot point, which is an eight millimeter carbon tube located approximately under the wing center of pressure along its cord. Let's take a quick section and show you the link all together so that you can see how it works from servo to wing. So zooming in here, you can see up at top the purple is the servo and then it's got the yellow servo horn, a link, the green rocker arm, and the blue push rod. So as we move the servo along its travel, the link and the rocker arm create a linear motion that then pushes on the wing. There's a secondary rod input into the wing that interfaces with the push rod to actuate it. So as you turn the servo, it moves the rod up and down, and as the main push rod moves up and down. You can see the tip of the wing there. We'll grab the profile. It slides inside of this slot. And that's how we get a direct mechanical connection to the wing and create our, our actuators for this integrated solution. Looking kind of at a isometric view now, it gives you a little bit different perspective on how the whole system works with all the components and you see the wing moving in plain view. Okay, so let's take a little bit of a different view now. We'll turn off the section, and then we're gonna look up at the top and look at the servos, and you can see that the design is mirrored over to the other side, and so this is a, a symmetrical design here. So this is how I was able to design a very compact mechanism, and it's actually hidden all within the foam in the final board. Quick aside, you look at the front. This just demos the rake angle of the steering and you can see kind of how it turns funny when I move it. But then also looking back, this is the tapered rear wings. So you can see that they're not square anymore. And with that, uh, that's pretty much all the changes to the CAD. And we'll take a look over at what I did in the code. I'll give you a quick demo on the actual boat to show you how this works in practice. So this is zero throttle, full pitch down. So move the throttle up, it actually controls it just with the throttle. And once it gets to about above 50% power or so, the rate is much slower. There's zero, so you're going really slow. You know, you got nothing going on, you need a lot of deflection. And as you speed up, you need less and less. What is up guys, we are back once again, and we finally have our integrated mast, and uh, we're gonna give her a rip. So this was the first test after I got the integrated mast put on, and I was really excited to see how it went. First, it was a little bit bumpy. Didn't quite want to fly right off the bat.
But after a little bit of coaxing, we got her up on the wings and it was flying pretty well. Still wasn't 100% stable, but I would say for a first test, this was a great success. Now we have some ventilation on the propeller. What is up guys? We are back at the beach. Another exciting day. All right guys, check out the setup here. We got the old computer. It's gonna run our mission planner setup so we can do our tuning. Obviously the radio, a couple tools so we can, you know, do a bodge here and there on the boat. And probably the most important thing, the table, I'll keep it out of the sand because you know how sand is, it goes everywhere. After trying some tuning on the water, I realized I had to make a test setup at home to get it dialed in. Here's the torture rack. We got one rubber band. She bounces real good like. So I've been disturbing the system like this. And this is designed to mimic the, uh, how it's done in the water. So I got one on each wing with these little holders I made. And then up here, I just got it around the front servo mount. Kind of so here you can see the boat is wobbling. That's my disturbance to the system and then the servos will actuate the wings to stabilize the roll axis. One side was fixed and one side had the rubber band so that the board was able to use the wings to lift itself. The final test was what it's all about, where the rubber meets the load. While it was really awesome, it yeah, did have a, a couple instabilities that still need to be worked out later Way on. Way better. But on the whole, performed significantly better than anything I had tested before. I was able to go fast and slow down quite a bit, all the way down to 30% throttle. The servo authority based on the throttle input that I programmed it through to do very well. This is faster. Look at that baby go. Oh, doesn't have quite so much authority at the low speeds. All right, I'm gonna drop him. I put in a really cool slow-mo for you guys to kind of see a little bit of what's going on when the boat takes off on the front wing and the rear wing. You can tell that the thrust below the water surface is a huge help in getting it up onto the wings. For the next video, we're gonna update the front mast and give that whole front part of the boat some love, update the design, and uh, that'll give us some more stable performance in corners and in the corner cases, takeoff, landing, all those kind of good places. So I think that's what I'm gonna do next so that this thing just boats really nice and easy and uh, I'll have a good place to really start moving the design up to the next scale. So. Thank you guys for making it to the end of the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. It's been a pleasure of mine to share this and continue working on it. I know it's been a little while since the previous video, but I'm staying down, getting, keeping my head down and we're working on things and getting it done. So expect a few more videos in the future to watch the progress continue and then eventually scale up to the big size. But I'm gonna need some help to get there. So if you guys are interested, I'd really appreciate your support on Patreon. It means a lot to me and it'll help me get a lot of the supplies I need, like motors, batteries especially, epoxy, carbon fiber, you know, you name it. Energy drinks, I'm gonna need a few of those. So uh, check it out up here. Intuitive Engineering is the name of my profile. And uh, once again, guys, thank you so much for your support. And um, I'm really looking forward to sharing more of the project with you. So I hope you guys have a great day and I will catch you next time. We have an engineer in his natural habitat. Let's try not to spook him. Let's see what he's working on. Getting the boat set up, it looks like. <laughs>